Greetings, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. It is I, Justin Cristelli, the real Manos, and I have a new episode of Retrocasting. I apologize for taking a few months off from this series, but uh, we are now returning with a character who is near and dear to my heart, one of my favorite uh, superheroes of all time, Wonder Woman. Now, Wonder Woman is a big favorite of mine. To let you know, I'm actually writing a... Wonder Woman fan fiction for DCPrime.com. Uh, now, the thing is, I don't normally have time to write anything like fan fiction. Uh, it would be fun, but, you know, I have my own works to uh, worry about. Uh, but that's how serious I am about this character and how uh, near and dear she is to me. So, let's review on what exactly retrocasting is, in case you haven't seen the first couple of episodes. Uh, retrocasting is a thought experiment I do with taking fan casting to the next level. Boy, that sounds really PR bullshit, doesn't it? Essentially, what I do is uh, I take classic actors and actresses from film and TV from the years 1920 through 1970 and cast them in modern-day superhero roles and see who would be really good for them. Uh, I think it's a fun way to uh, do fan casting. If you have any ideas of yourself, please list them below in the comments or even feel free to do a response video. I always like starting conversations if that's possible. Now, <clears throat> let's take our Wayback Machine and go back in time through the years of Hollywood history and find what actresses and actors would be great for a Wonder Woman film. Considering how things have been going with Wonder Woman, we might need a time machine now to go see a Wonder Woman film. But let's go backwards this time. And this time I'm going to uh, look at Wonder Woman's enemies first and then go through her friends all the way up to Princess Diana herself. Let's start off with uh, one of her more recent villains, Veronica Kale. Uh, Veronica Kale is a Greg Rucka creation who is a she's an interesting kind of villain because she attacks Wonder Woman through essentially her philosophy. She's a political villain who has tons of money to spare uh, to send all sorts of nasties after her uh, to really kind of essentially uh, tear her heart out. Uh, that's that's basically this woman's goal. She's pure evil. Um, I think Betty Davis, probably in her 20s or 30s, uh, would have been a great Veronica Kale. She she had a wonderful, um, strong sense uh, about the villains she would play. She was very uh, manipulative uh, and rather playing a villain or a heroic character, really. Uh, she would always be able to tie that strength with her femininity, and I, th I think... She would be a wonderfully evil uh, Veronica Kale. Now, Giganta. Giganta is possibly the first Wonder Woman villain I was familiar with, and uh, I can't imagine doing anything film or TV or, or animation without Giganta. Uh, I decided to not use <laughs> uh, Allison. Hayes, who played uh, the 50-foot woman, because I thought that would be kind of cheating. So, I went with Tora Satana, star of Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. She pretty much was Giganta in real life. Uh, she was a B-movie actress, a burlesque dancer, uh, all-around personality. She actually w <laughs> would fit into this role very well. Even though she doesn't really look like uh, the red-haired Giganta we were familiar with, uh, you put this woman in costume and character, and she would, you know, even before she would grow, she would be uh, intimidating. Uh, next is probably one of her uh, lesser-known villains, uh, but definitely dangerous, Dr. Poison, uh, the female version. Dr. Poison is essentially what you think. A mad scientist who uses all sorts of chemicals and uh, genetic kind of material and is quite scary. Uh, kind of a little like Poison Ivy without the uh, Vic Victoria's Secret sexiness to her. She was just crazy. And I think 
Gloria Swanson from Sunset Boulevard. A wonderful actress, and she had such a great crazy face. Uh, selling this character would have a lot to do with uh, the work with the eyes, and uh, I, I, can't, I can't imagine another classic actress uh, better at this than, than her. Now, let's go to um, one of her... Uh, this is a terrific villain. Dr. Psycho. Of course, he does have kind of a... He's never been one of my favorite named villains because it's such an easy name. Oh, Dr. Psycho! But uh, he's actually a very intimidating villain. This, um, this, this dangerous dwarf man who has psychic abilities, and he absolutely hates women. <laughs> and he's, he's a horrible misogynist. And he uses his psychic abilities to their most violent tendencies. Uh, what a dangerous, dangerous, awful person. And I love Billy Barty. Billy Barty would be wonderful for this role. There's a couple of other dwarf actors who could play this character, but Billy Barty, uh, let, let's face it, he was the dwarf actor. Uh, the little man uh, actor for decades, and this man worked and worked and worked. He had a great variety of roles. He would do, uh, he could do dramatic roles, he could do comedic roles, he could do A-list stuff and D-list stuff, uh, TV, film, supporting, uh, you name it, this guy would do it, and all sorts of makeup or anything, and he was a constant professional. Uh, he was great at subtlety, he was great at really hamming it up. He was just absolutely a, a, a fantastic actor. Oh, all we would have to do is just give a look in those eyes and then crack that voice out of his, and he would be uh, a rather scary Dr. Psycho. Uh, next, <clears throat> we go to Cersei. And, of course, Cersei is the classically known Cersei witch character, uh, who made it into Wonder Woman's uh, uh, gallery of bows. And Cersei is that all-powerful witch and really loving how evil she is. I am banking that Elizabeth Montgomery, who also played a witch, Samantha from uh, Bewitched, uh, would be it would kill it. Now, here's, a th here's an interesting thing about uh, Elizabeth Montgomery. She was a wonderful actress. Years during this show of uh, Bewitched, it became known that um, she got rather bored playing this role. And actually, when you look at a lot of the episodes, yeah, it, is, it would be kind of a drag getting doing this job like uh, week in, week out. Uh, so that's why the character of Serena was invented, just so she could play bad and go nuts. And if you watch any of these Serena episodes where she plays this character... You can tell she is just enjoying the shit out of playing this character. Uh, I can easily imagine her taking a character. It's, the Wonder Woman Cersei is essentially a, a more s serious, uh, larger scale version of Serena. So I can't imagine her not having a ball with that part. Now, next, pro possibly Wonder Woman's best known villain. Uh, Cheetah. Now, there's quite a do few different versions of Cheetah. Uh, I'll just go with the standard here. I, I, I think Joan Crawford. I've used her before in uh, another retro casting, but she she's great at villains. She's great at menace, and uh, she would just be such a cool, sexy Cheetah. Especially if you get her like in her probably in her twenties or uh, brought her brought around uh, when she was thirty. She'd be right on the money for playing this kind of role. I could easily see... Man, the fight scenes would be very, very good. Uh, all right, now, we're going to Silver Swan. There's actually a couple of versions of Silver Swan. I'm going to go with the Valerie uh, Beaudry version here. And uh, that would be played by uh, Marissa Mel. Marissa Mel is probably, quite possibly, the least known actress on this uh, group. She is best known for her work in the awesome movie Danger Diabolic. She she was born to play a supervillain. And matter of fact, she did in Danger Diabolic. Um, she would look great in costume. She was a good actress. She definitely would play this part very well. Uh, I, I just, I, I love the idea of her doing this role. Now, 
Oh, okay. We are now to Wonder Woman's most dangerous foe. I would probably say since the George Perez uh, era, uh, Wonder Woman's main villain has been Ares. And he's, you know, the villain of uh, the Wonder Woman animated film for a couple of years ago. He even popped up in the uh, Justice League animated series. He's definitely, I would probably back as, uh, if there was a film, he would probably be the chief villain. Or at the very least, highly involved with what was going on. I think <clears throat> Orson Welles would rock as Wonder Woman's Ares. Uh, this man would play this role as if it was the greatest Shakespearean role that hadn't been written yet. And uh, he would know when to like have fun with it. He would know when to be deadly serious. And I know he could switch that on a dime because that's what he could do. Definitely, you put him some sort of like armored costume, and you put that voice with it. He would. Just, this man would have just been wonderful. Oh, uh, all right. Now let's go to some friends. Now we're going to go to uh, Julia uh, Capanellis, uh, and uh, she was actually a very important friend and ally of uh, Wonder Woman when she first came to uh, America in the George Perez era, and I think. I'd say an older uh, 40s, 50s Catherine Hepburn would have been good for this role. Uh, she's definitely a, 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 a strong uh, person who doesn't have any kind of physical powers whatsoever, but definitely would carry that weight with her. And as her daughter, Vanessa, I, I, I regret having to use somebody who had just passed away, but Shirley Temple, uh, particularly in her teens, I think would have been very good for this role. Uh, she was... A, she was a wonderful, likable, uh, vulnerable actress, and uh, she, you just couldn't help but uh, like her. And Vanessa was like an instant friend at, to uh, Wonder Woman, and so I could easily see a bond between them. Now, Vanessa eventually became a version of a brainwashed Silver Swan. I don't know if uh, I don't know if Tem Shirley Temple could have done a role like that, to be honest. Uh, but I would love to see her have tried. All right, now, uh, all right, we're getting into the stretch here. Etta Candy. Etta Candy is possibly one of Wonder Woman's two earliest allies. She was in the original comics, uh, along with Steve Trevor, and she was always there. She was uh, the plucky uh, sidekick character, and she, I, 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 I think... I really like the way she's portrayed in, like, the George Perez years and the more recent uh, Gail Simone comics. I think Gail Simone did a really good job with that character. I love the idea of Shirley Winters. Excuse me, Shelley Winters. I'm sorry. Uh, do, uh, Shelley Winters doing this part. Uh, it almost seems like a part Taylor written for her, uh, especially if you get her in uh, sort of the middle years where she was starting to gain a little weight. But, uh, you know, was, was still attractive. I think you, you could easily see her doing um, the Gail Simone version uh, pretty effortlessly. Uh, she, she did, like, she was funny, and she could be, like, violent in roles. Uh, and you just do not to mess with her. Uh, what a great actress. Uh, all right, now to da 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 Steve Trevor. I like... Burt Lancaster as Steve Trevor. Now, there are several different ways you could portray Steve, either the younger version, the hot, sexy version, or, uh, you know, the older guy. And I think whatever age you pull him, uh, pull him out of, uh, I think Burt Lancaster could have done it. He just looked great in uniform, and he was a good hero type. Uh, he was a very likable actor, and I could definitely... He, he, was, good, he was good at, uh, like, you know... He had very good chemistry with a lot of the actresses he worked with, and uh, I, I think he could play this role pretty well without having him seem emasculated or, at the worst, uh, a misogynist. Because, uh, you know, if you don't write or portray this character correctly, he comes off really badly. And uh, I think he could do a lot to grounding this character in the real world, frankly. 
All right, now we're at our top three, and Donna Troy or Wonder Girl. Oh, uh, I thought a lot about the casting for Wonder Girl um, and uh, Diana herself, and went back and forth, back and forth on uh, these actresses, actually. <laughs> and I am totally convinced a young, early 20s Elizabeth Taylor would be perfect as Princess Diana's sister. Elizabeth Taylor was just such a good actress, and she had such good strength, and, you know, when, when you call, what do you call those, like, old souls? Like, she really could be really, I mean, for someone so young, she was very convincing as someone who had been through a lot uh, on screen, and she always did that well, and she... Uh, several times in her life she was able to even play older, um, like Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, for, in, for instance. Uh, I, I, I could definitely, I would definitely want, want to watch her play this character, and she could have a lot of fun. Uh, now, Queen Hippolyta, Queen of the Amazons, what actress could convincingly play someone so strong that she could be the mother of Wonder Woman, uh, stand up to the gods, and command an army of the toughest women in the world, possibly even the, one of the toughest armies in the world. Barbara Stanwyck, that's who. I had first seen Barbara Stanwyck as a kid on a western called uh, The Big Valley, and I was always kind of knocked out by by her. And then I've seen some uh, of her early work, you know, throughout the years, to Double Indemnity, for instance, and. I could. This woman really knew how to command a screen. Uh, she had this great inner strength that came right out uh, in any of her performances. Uh, I could see her giving orders and people just following them uh, <laughs> without question. Barbara Standrick is my choice for Hippolyta. All right. We've talked about Hippolyta and uh, Donna Troy. Now, what actress for this role that Hollywood seems is so complicated and you can't seem to do, what actress could play this role? Um, I think, after a little while thinking about it, if I had my choice of any actress to play Wonder Woman, I would choose Jane Russell. Jane Russell was known for, I, I suppose her strongest film was, well, actually her debut film, I should say, is The Outlaw. It was Howard Hughes' film. It made a lot of money. It was very controversial because of how outwardly sexual, sexual the film was. Back during, I believe this is during the Hays Code, and it really did uh, test a lot of the limits. She also became known for her comedic work, like uh, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, she was just awesome, and uh, I have to say that uh, you know, just watching her in films, she she had like, she had she was capable of being strong and and quiet and friendly. She had a lovely little smile. Uh, she also had this serious face that you know, knew you know <laughs> that uh, she was not you know having any any kind of prob any any taking any of your shit. Uh, I just think that, and also, she looks a lot like Wonder Woman, especially maybe uh, the 40s era Wonder Woman. Uh, with the hair, the stature, she could do this role. And I, I think she would sell it and kill it and just be the best Wonder Woman ever. And uh, I'm sorry we don't really have time machines, so we can't actually make this cast. But if you had your shot, if you had your time machine... Who would you uh, choose for the cast of Wonder Woman? Who, how would you make your movie? Well, that's it for this month. Next month, I hope to resume this series. And I'm going to actually go nuts for April and do retro casting for X-Men. Uh, it might be three hours long because there's 80 billion characters in X-Men. Uh, but I can't wait to do that one. So I'm going to get going. And until next time... Take care.